morning and welcome to another lecture in sustainable energy technology. In the last few lectures, we have been discussing various types of energy storage systems and we covered in the most recent lectures the different technologies for electrochemical energy storage that is uh, battery based energy storage systems. Today we will switch focus and look at another type of energy storage which is not trying to store mechanical or electrical energy. Instead, it is trying to store thermal energy. In the previous cases, most of the energy storage systems were ultimately geared to deliver, store and deliver electrical energy to different applications or the grid. But electrical energy is not the only useful type of energy that we need. Another type of energy that is widely used is thermal energy. In terms of heat energy that is uh, used for anything from hot water systems to process heat in industries to thermal heat transfer out of systems like in air conditioning and refrigeration cycles. So here we will discuss various types of thermal energy storage systems. How to store thermal energy and then to utilize the thermal energy to do useful work. So storing, there are two types of uh, thermal energy storage systems in use. These are storing thermal energy at high temperatures, usually as latent heat of steam or molten salts to produce electrical power. So here thermal energy is primarily used uh, uh, is primarily stored in order to convert it later into electrical energy. And this is high temperature thermal energy storage systems that are usually uh, uh, stored in the form of latent heat of steam or molten salts. So uh, just to recall, latent heat is the heat that is absorbed or released by a property, by a substance as it changes phase. So the latent heat of vaporization of water or uh, latent heat of condensation of steam is the heat that is absorbed or released when steam is condensing to water or water is vaporizing into steam at a given pressure and temperature. Similarly, the latent heat of molten salts is the heat that is uh, absorbed by the salts as they transform from a solid phase to the liquid phase and vice versa. These uh, types of uh, latent heat based uh, thermal storage systems usually store this heat at a very high temperature, the corresponding temperature of uh, melting or vaporization and they are able to store a significantly large amount of heat at these high temperatures. So this heat can be used to later generate electrical energy through a usual thermodynamic cycle. So that is why when you are storing thermal energy at high temperatures for conversion to electrical power, you use latent heat based energy storage systems. The other option is to store thermal energy at moderate temperatures, which is temperatures below 100 degree centigrade for later use as hot water systems for heating buildings. So this is primarily a hot water based systems. You are storing sensible heat not latent heat, so heat that is absorbed as the temperature of the substance increases without changing its phase. And this is primarily the storage material is water, you are basically heating water and this is just a hot water system for heating buildings or other applications. A third form of thermal energy storage systems is storing of coolness, that is negative temperature gradients. That is storing coolness that is at low at temperatures lower than the ambient. So usually this is done by chilling water to very low temperatures or creating ice for later use in refrigeration or air conditioning systems. So here what we do is the thermal storage medium, we extract heat from this thermal storage medium to make it cold like cold water, ice, etc. frozen salts is also an option and this cold medium is stored at that lower temperature for later use in a refrigeration or a air, air conditioning system. 
So we are basically storing coolness to uh, call it a non-technical term, but basically we are uh, preserving a negative temperature gradient you by extracting heat from the thermal storage medium and insulating that thermal storage medium at that low temperature lower than the ambient. Okay. So all these three options are basically helping us to do heat transfer at a later date for different uses, either for uh, uh, converting that heat flux into energy, into electrical energy, or converting that heat flux to create hot water for domestic use, or converting that heat flux to cool uh, buildings through a refrigeration or air conditioning system. Okay. So first we will look at the simplest of these energy storage systems, which is the sensible thermal energy storage. Okay. So store, the storage material stores thermal energy as sensible heat. So the thermal energy Q is the density of the material into the volume of the material into specific heat of the material into the temperature gradient between the uh, storage material and the ambient. So density into volume is your mass. Specific heat is basically the heat stored per unit temperature gradient per unit mass and delta T is the actual temperature gradient. So the total unit here is joules. So this is the amount of heat that is being stored when that substance is being heated to a certain temperature T above the ambient temperature, T ambient. So during the charging cycle, the material absorbs heat and increases in temperature. During the discharge cycle, it releases the stored sensible heat and decreases in temperature. Okay, so that's a very clear cut. So when you when your material is being charged, it is absorbing heat from a certain source and increasing in temperature, then it is storing this heat by keeping the temperature of this medium elevated and then during the discharge cycle, it is releasing the stored sensible heat to some application where heat flow is needed. So the rate of heat transfer is again density into volume into specific heat into the rate of change of temperature with time. So this is the heat flux from the material into the system where we want the heat into. Okay. So rho into V is the mass of the system again, C is the specific heat and this is the rate of change of temperature of the material with time as it is losing heat during the discharging cycle to the material, uh, to, the, uh, to, the, uh, useful, to the useful work or when it is absorbing heat, then this dt dt will be positive and it is extracting heat from the uh, from whatever the source is and heating itself up. The main important point is it must have good insulation to prevent heat loss during storage time. Okay. So while the heat is being stored, the thermal storage material must be well insulated so that the heat transfer is minimized so that the temperature remains elevated. Okay. Now if you look at uh, these expressions here, you can see that if the specific heat of the material is large, then it can store more heat at a given temperature gradient. Right. Similarly, if the material is massive, so if, if the material is extremely dense, then for a given volume, it can store more heat. So if the density is higher, then keeping the volume fixed, you can get a better heat absorption ability out of it. So usually we want materials which have high specific heats and are dense. That mean, means that for a given temperature gradient, you will be able to store much more heat per unit volume. Okay. And with that, we need the requirement that it has to be well insulated. So one application here is sensible heat, space heaters and water heaters. Okay. So these are made of packed bricks. So packed bricks like highly dense brick structure or similar high density material with large specific volumetric heat capacity. Okay. So the, the heat capacity, the amount of heat it can absorb per unit volume is large. So that is the important thing. So you do 
Q by V, joules per meter cube. This is your volumetric heat capacity. This is rho C into delta T. So, for a specific delta T value, if the density and C are large, then you have a large volumetric heat capacity. And the material usually chosen is what are called packed bricks, which have this criteria for sensible heat space heaters and water heaters. Okay. So, this is the kind of the structure of how these uh, sensible space heaters and water heaters work. You have uh, cold air from outside going in to this packed brick structure. So, this is where the packed brick structure is there and this outer layer is the insulation layer to prevent heat transfer due when the packed brick is used to store the heat. Okay. This is an electrical wire going through the packed brick system. So, what is happening is during the charging cycle, electricity is passed through this wire and this packed brick gets heated through resistive heating. So, the electrical energy gets dissipated as heat through the resistor coils inside this packed brick structure and the packed brick structure gets heated up to a certain temperature T above the ambient. Then it is stored and if you have good insulation, then the temperature does not drop significantly during the storage time. And then during the discharge cycle, what we do is we pass cold air from the outside through a series of pipes through this packed brick structure and while it is flowing through this packed brick structure, this cold air absorbs heat from the packed brick structure, becomes hot air and is then, uh, uh, so, uh, then goes into a building heating system. So, this is called a space heating system. In many cold countries, you have this system where you have hot, what, hot air or water pipes going through the walls to heat up the building during winter times. Okay. So, this is a building space heating technology and basically you are using this packed brick structure to store the heat that it is absorbing from electricity and you are passing air through the system, heating up the air and using it to heat up the building. And here you have the high density energy storage medium. So, the, during the charging cycle, electricity is passed to heat up the packed brick structure. During the storage, you have a good insulation to keep the temperature relatively constant. And during discharge, you are passing cold air to heat up the air by absorbing heat from the packed brick structure and using it for building heating systems. So, electrical energy is dissipated into heat through resistors and this heat is absorbed by the storage material. This is done during periods of low electrical demand. So, the reason why we are not doing it when we need it is when, so for, uh, because as we discussed at the beginning of the energy storage based technology systems, electrical demand changes through time in a day or over a month. Okay. There are periods when the electricity demand is low. Okay. And then the electricity taken from the grid is actually cheaper than when the electricity demand is high. And we know why this is, right? We have uh, discussed this point that uh, the base load electricity demand is uh, uh, catered to by base load power plants, which are working extremely efficient. So, one unit of electricity at low demand point is primarily coming from the base load power point and making it much cheaper than electricity extracted when there is a peak in demand because then much of the electricity is coming from the peak load power, power plants or peaking power plants which have high costs associated with it and hence the unit of electricity costs more. So, it makes economic sense to heat up these uh, packed brick structures during periods of low demand in the grid in general and then using the heat to heat up the air when the electricity demand and hence the electricity cost peaks. Okay. So, then you are no longer extracting electricity from the grid at the times of peak demand and hence you are saving economically and you are also helping in balancing the grid. Okay. So, these two aspects then become very useful. You are balancing the demand uh, supply cycle by not extracting energy during periods of high demand 
and while you are elevating the demand at periods of lower demand. So that will smoothen the curve rather than uh, exacerbating the differences between high demand and low demand. So it makes more both economic sense and sense in terms of the demand, demand supply matching. Okay. So this is what is being said during periods of high demand, the space water heater units gradually really stored heat to a stream of air water that is circulated through heat exchanger channels within the storage material. This heated air or water then flows into the building for space heating and water heating needs. So you can put air or water through the system and you can get water heating systems or space heating systems. Okay. So that's one type of system. The second type of system we will discuss is latent heat based thermal storage systems. So this is the high temperature thermal storage usually used for industrial process heat where you require high heat systems or electricity generation. Here what we use are two types of latent heats, latent heat of vaporization, liquid to vapor conversion and back or latent heat of fusion, solid to liquid conversion or back. So here the phase change, the uh, uh, thermal storage medium is actually changing phase during the charge discharge cycle. So for example, uh, when it is charging, it is absorbing heat and changing its phase from either liquid to vapor, so it's like liquid water into steam or changing its phase from solid to liquid, like solid salt to molten salt, absorbing heat, absorbing the latent heat of vaporization or latent heat of fusion and charging itself and changing its phase to either vaporized steam or liquid salt. And then when it is during the discharge cycle, when it is releasing this heat, it is changing its phase back from the vapor to liquid or liquid to solid. Okay. So it is then the steam is condensing into liquid water and releasing this heat or molten salt is solidifying to solid salt and releasing this heat. Remember, we discussed something like this when we discussed phase change materials in terms of solar thermal systems especially the evacuated tube solar collectors had exactly this kind of a phase change material that was shifting from liquid phase to vapor phase and transmitting the heat of the sun into the water system. So this is a similar kind of a structure. Okay, and so we use a sort of a phase change material, which is a general term used for mediums, which are primarily using the phase change process to store and release heat. So water to steam, uh, molten to solid metals, solid salts to molten salts. Okay, these are various options that are available. The advantage is heat is absorbed and released at a fixed temperature. So this is very important because many industrial processes may require heat transfer to occur at a fixed temperature. And in many energy systems also you need a fixed temperature to get high efficiency electricity electricity production. Okay. So when the temperature at which heat is getting transferred needs to be in a narrow band, there phase change materials are very useful because remember when a substance is changing phase, it does not change its temperature. So you are getting heat transfer at a fixed temperature. Okay. So pressurized steam, other types of pressurized vapors, molten metals, molten salts, etc. So, uh, we will stop here today. We will continue our discussion on phase change materials and latent heat uh, based energy storage systems in the next class. Thank you for listening and we will see you in the next class once more.